Hey guys, this is Dan from Subsystems. I uh, wanted to give you a quick update. I've been running out of my stock of my 8-bit and 4-bit microprocessor trainers. Um, these little computers that teach you how to program in machine language so you can get a little better understanding of what's actually going on in your computer. Uh, the problem is I've been hit by the chip shortage as so many people have. My little computer chip that used to be somewhere around 2 $3 a unit are now about $80 a unit when you can find them. Uh, making it very hard to produce this little board at a reasonable price. Um, so I was thinking about it, and um, one of the solutions I came up with is the Smart Response XC. I offer this. This is a, a handheld unit that was used in classrooms, and teachers could interact with students through this. And uh, yeah, there we go. Um, I've ported a copy of Arduino Basic to it, and I sell that on the Tindy site. But I thought, why not port the 8-bit software to it? So I have. Um, so now you can get these in with my 8-bit uh, trainer in it. So you can use all the paperwork. You can learn about how the 4-bit and 8-bit trainers work, how to program them. But you can do this on this unit. It has a couple of advantages to it. It has a little bit more memory. So you can store 10 programs instead of two, like my other unit has. Um, it's got a really cool display, so I can do a little bit more with that. So when you turn it on, the button on the top turns it on, like all of these. Um, you'll see it, it kind of mimics the controls, uh, the buttons on the bottom here that handle your programming and your data entry. Those um, have been replicated. Uh, your control buttons are replicated in soft buttons on the side here, and you can see on the display. Um, I still have a, a mimic of eight LEDs on the top, and the address is down on the bottom here. And I also give a hexadecimal display for the data. Um, and then I've broken up some of the other commands like power. This will power off. And in the power off state, it only uses a couple of micro amps. So the batteries last really good. I really love these units. They're, they're pretty amazing. Um, so when I turn this on, let's take a quick look. Um, it works pretty much just like the 8-bit trainer. You can follow. It's got all of the instructions, except I've made a couple modifications, and we can go over those. And one of those, let me load up this program. I wrote a program. Um, there's no temperature sensor on the smart response like there is on my 8-bit unit, but there is a way to measure the voltage. So I've replaced that instruction. Instead of reading the temperature, you actually read the voltage uh, on your batteries. So that's what this program is. So if I run it, what it does is it samples the battery voltage and then it comes back with a number between 99 and zero. So I convert the hexadecimal to decimal um, in, the, in the software. And then it displays that level and I kind of use 99 at about 6.4 volts, I think. And then zero is like three point, you know, whatever 100 units turns out to be. But what it does is gives you this sliding scale in a decimal number you can read um, instead of having to worry about the hex. So this is saying you're at about a level of 71. So if you watch this over time, you'll get to know what do fresh batteries look like? What do my batteries look like when they're about ready to die for your particular unit? So that's a great way to know when you're starting to get to where the batteries need replacing. So um, notice that the run screen gets rid of your soft um, functions, except the ones you need, like reset. And I have certain functions, like if you wait to enter information from the keyboard, you'll see another little soft button saying enter. Or if you come to a wait function, um, it'll show you, you know, do you want to go from here? Because the computer will just sit and wait until you press go. Um, so yeah, a lot of really neat advantages to it. Like I said, added a couple of instructions that as I was writing more and more software for this, uh, and just enjoying the programming realized, Hey, there's a couple that I'd really like to have. So, um, I've added the, uh, push function. I added a small stack of, uh, 32 bytes and these are in a separate array. So they're not going to take away from the 256 byte program area. Um, but it allows you to push um, bytes onto the stack and then pop them off. And I have that for uh, A, for the accumulator A, accumulator B, and register Y. And then I added a call and return function. So you can actually do subroutines. So the call function will be followed by the address of the subroutine. And then when the subroutine is done running, the last uh, instruction is return. And that will return you to the place you were right after you called the subroutine. Um, so you can only do one of these. They can't be nested. 
because I just save the return location into one variable. Um, but it does allow you to do a subroutine. And I think I have a program where, let's see, is it this guy? Yeah, this is going to simulate the planets flying through them from um, the sun to Neptune, if you could do it in one minute. Um, and this was part of my, um, my Starship STEM training uh, package that I offer on Tindy. It's one of the programs that it does. Uh, but it's pretty neat because it, it shows you like the inner planets are really close and the outer planets are really far. So in a minute, at traveling at a constant velocity from you know, the sun to Neptune in one minute, it shows you when you pass all the planets. And it's, it, it's really fun to run. And some people just are absolutely amazed at how big the outer solar system is because you run through the inner planets in no time. And then it seemingly takes forever to get to the final planets. But this uses a subroutine. This uh, changes the timing and then runs a subroutine that says, hey, wait that amount of time and then light the next planet. And then it goes back to the program and I just keep reloading that. Um, I've included a couple of sample programs in the documentation that I have on Tindy. So, you know, you can get started right away. Um, but if you're interested at all in fundamental computer programming on the machine level, um, this is a great unit because it's it's a lot of fun to play with. Now it's, it's super portable. Um, batteries last a long time. You've got a much nicer uh, GUI um, to, to play with. And you've got 10 locations to store uh, your programs in. Like I said, I always store the battery, battery monitor in that nine slot. So I always know where it is. And every once in a while, I go and check it. And mine starts at about 83% for really good batteries. And when it gets down to like 60 or so, it's when I need to start thinking about changing them. Um, so great. You know, so the heck with the uh, chip shortage, we'll just do what we can to keep on learning about computers. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.